now we had this one a couple of weeks ago, about three or four weeks back, and it was actually quite popular because we covered a whole lot of different things. And it was all about um, good old failed franchises, things that uh, where the movie or the TV show was really successful, but the collectible sucked. The big one. Yeah. So uh, what do you reckon, um, Mr. Aaron, where are we leading to tonight? So the first thing we're going to look at is Blake 7. And Blake 7, you could almost say, is the opposite to um, the reason why most of the other franchises underperformed in that the BBC who produced it probably didn't have an idea of how popular it was going to be, didn't sell it very well to franchisees. So there was a lot of fans, but there was never a lot of merchandise uh, produced. And by the time they cottoned on, they could probably make some money out of it. The four seasons had come and gone. Um, the fans had kind of moved on and it wasn't till later. And you can tell when something is popular um, 20 years ago because the people who grew up with it become a massive fan base and now there's more Black 7 merchandise now than there was around when the show was actually on. I was just going to say a lot of people won't know anything about Black 7, won't have even heard of it before, won't even know what the premise is. So just to put it in the very simple terms, if you want to know what was Black 7 like, it was effectively the 1970s slash 80s version of Firefly. That's sort of very, very basic. So these are some of the things that were available for Blake Seven. Now, Blake Seven was created by Terry Nation, who was on a bit of a roll because he created the Daleks for Doctor Who and Blake Seven was his actual show. And so he was quite um, notorious for having his finger in the pie and trying to merchandise stuff. So we're looking at the books here. Every year in um, Britain, kids would get a annual under their Christmas tree and Blake Seven was no different. There were Blake Seven annuals uh, for four years when the show was going. Um, we've got the pictures of them there. The one thing that I find with Blake Seven, a lot of the merchandise looks the same because obviously the BBC had about four different production photos they sent out to everyone. So you can see the picture of the Liberator is on the cover of the annual and then inside the annual and then in artwork in the annual and it's all the same picture. And this is very similar with the books as well where they often have a very small pool of um, artwork to choose from when they represent the series. So a lot of the Blake 7 merchandise can look a bit same-ish because it's just the logo and a picture of the Liberator or a different spaceship. And if you're wondering why there's no apostrophe with Blake's and like the seven, there should be one, but there isn't one because it is actually Blake is the person. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Interestingly enough, um, Blake Seven was popular enough that it got a monthly magazine. Um, so this might be surprising to some people because it, it was a show that was um, had... I guess, a limited appeal compared to something like Doctor Who. It was a more adult show. And Blake 7 magazine went for 20-odd issues and kind of disappeared. But Blake 7 was so popular that even years later, the ones on the bottom left and the bottom right, occasionally a Blake 7 winter special would come out or a Blake 7 holiday special would come out and there would just be odd releases of the magazine because the show was so popular and so fondly remembered that it still had an audience to do that. So anyone who grew up with Blake 7, um, you can collect the merchandise and it probably isn't going to send you broke and it isn't going to um, fill up a house because they didn't release a lot of it. But there is a lot of nice things you can collect that are out there. So um, the, the ship from Blake 7, the Liberator, the main ship in the first couple of years, was a fantastic design. The one thing that um, people watching it who haven't seen the show probably don't realise, it's probably the it probably drives in the opposite direction yeah. to what you think, where the green ball at the, at the front that you might think where everyone sits and pilots it, that's actually the propulsion device. And what looks like the rocket jets on the other end, the four prongs, um, they're actually... That's the that's the front of the ship where it goes forward, and that's where the characters sit and where the missiles and the defence systems are. So I don't know if when the designer made it, it they deliberately did it like that or a director choice did that. Still, I think that's very cool because when you see the actual episodes and it does that, you're like, wow, I've just been perceiving this wrong the whole time. Now, interestingly enough, Corgi uh, produced this and they produced it in different colours. And I always thought it was because, you know, they just made a mistake and the white one was the real one and then the metallic blue and yellow was um, a mistake. But then I looked at some of the pictures that the BBC had and there are ones where the pictures have been tinted that colour and Corgi obviously got one of those and decided that must be the correct colour for it. Um, 
the interesting one there is the one on the far right, which is the cosmic strike force. And this is again, like we looked at Battlestar Galactica, where they obviously took an existing ship and like put a Blake seven logo on it and go, that's the cosmic spike strike force from Blake seven. It is one of those cheap and nasty rebrands that really has nothing to do with Blake seven at all. Hence that is the rarest of the ships to find. Um, wasn't there a second ship in Blake Seven? You had the Liberator, and you had some other ship. I've forgotten. I've just yes. the names just escaped me. Do you you know what the, it was? You had the Scorpio. Um, yeah, do they ever produce some, merchandise for that? Well, there are some fan um, garage kits of the Scorpio, and in recent years, there's been uh, more available. But at the time, no, that was from from the last series where sort of the popularity was going down, so there wasn't Very as good. much merchandise. And then, of course. Um, Blake Seven was incredibly popular on video. It was one of those series that wasn't re wasn't replayed much. So when it came out on video, there was a big demand with people with nostalgic memories of it. And originally they released episodes cut into movies. So the four on the left there were the first four releases, which was Blake Seven, The Beginning and Aftermath and Orac and Jewel. Um, and fans, of course, go, oh, these are cut like they're four episodes cut into one. We want the whole series. And after a couple of years, the BBC relented and they did release the entire series on VHS sell through. And they had the fantastic art covers that were done by some of the same artists from the Doctor Who line. So they dovetail quite nicely into Doctor Who collections. And then on the far right, there was another VHS reissue where they, um, they stylized it even even more and put photos from the episodes on them so you can collect blake seven videos and get about three different sets of the the series if you're a total completist yeah i don't think many people would I think it's it's been like four decades now and it's long forgotten and uh if you've got any blake seven collectibles hang on to them but uh i would i'd be very surprised if there was any value in them now so in the videos of course of yeah they'd end up in the landfill if they haven't done so already but either way it was still a popular show as we said and uh, it'll probably die the death of obscurity as the decades roll on but uh good on it for at the time but uh yeah, well, the, there you go.